It's old school in today's R&B. Over the last year, perhaps you've seen these life-saving cable barriers go up from the Louisiana-Texas state line down I-20 to Mississippi. But that move came only after our two years of KSLA reports on the need to better prevent crossover head-on accidents using the same kind of safety barriers constructed all over Texas. You see how they work right there. Well, tonight, proof positive these barriers work. A local teen is sharing her appreciation of those cable barriers. And the main person on the receiving end of her grateful and sincere thanks is the mother of a young teen who went through that exact same thing they did, but before the barriers ever went up. Mile marker 29.1, Interstate 20, near the town of Houghton, sitting on the hill on the roadside. A marker of another kind. I mean, I miss Megan. I, I really, really do. In 2012, 16-year-old Megan Moat and 17-year-old Aaron Manchak were in the front seat of an SUV. Both were killed, and one of their two friends in the back seat critically injured. Just a group of teens chatting away, seconds before Aaron lost control, darted through the grassy median, and hit two other vehicles head on. Her belief in God was so strong, and if God came down and told her, Megan, this is what I have for you to do, as much as she would hate leaving us, her family, she would still do it if she was saving other lives. And the year after those barriers were put in, there was only one fatal crash. Two years of reporting on the need for barriers. Losing a child is the worst pain I've ever felt in my entire life. And heartbroken mothers pushing lawmakers and DOTD officials to get it done. And now cable barriers stretch up and down I-20, right by where Megan and Aaron lost their lives. And bittersweet, you know, because you think of the fight we've had and the knowledge we've had that these barriers could have been up many, many years before my daughter's accident. Megan's mother has prayed her daughter's death not be in vain. God had an angel watching out for us today. And eight miles further down I-20, two and a half years later. People say you never know what they could be your last. last. And, and things, things, things like, like this, this could happen, happen to anyone at any time. I say Kelly Hatfield's prayer was answered, posted to Facebook directed right at her. So thankful the Lord is allowing me and these two girls, girls to walk, walk away from this and live to see another day. I've never even really noticed them, to be honest, until that day. 18-year-old Charity Gregory admits she had never given these new barriers a single thought until February 6th at mile marker 37, sitting in the back seat and her two friends in the front. We started to swerve off, we felt it going over the little bumps or whatever's on the shoulders, and that's when I looked up and we swerve trying to correct. Just a group of teens chatting away seconds before losing control of their car and darting across the grassy median. Two almost identical accidents. It's very similar. It's terrifying how similar they are. With one major difference, the ending. We were sitting there in the ambulance waiting to go to the hospital and it was just kind of like, like this just really happened. Like, it made me smile. It, it made me happy to know that all this hard work that we've done for the last two and a half years, you know, for the cable barriers, actually proved what the fight was for, to save lives. Charity and her two friends survived with only bumps and bruises. Oh, my God, like, this could have been, should have been so much worse. In a lifetime of what-ifs. She gets to live the rest of her life. She gets to graduate from high school. She gets to hopefully get married one day and have children of her own. You just get the chills. Charity's grandmother was as equally oblivious to those cable barriers. I just didn't think they'd work, <laughs> to be honest with you. And perhaps they're not alone. In the handful of months that cable barriers have been up along I-20 in our four parish region, Caddo, Bossier, Webster, and Claiborne parishes, DOTD tells me they've had at least 60 incidents of cars leaving the roadway, coming through the median, and striking and damaging their cable barriers. If you go down the road, I don't know how, if you've noticed, but there's a lot of skid marks and a lot of parts of vehicles on those barriers, I and mean, quite a few. And it could be argued each one of these crashes could have. It, it was just amazing because it was just, that's exactly what you did. Life saved, life saved, life saved. Or should have been a life lost in a head-on collision, if not for the barriers. Exactly what Charity says a state trooper told her minutes after their crash. One of the highway patrol officers were like, you know, 
those metal barriers just saved your life. It's doing its job. State troopers see more and live with more than you and I would think possible. When you do have a crossover crash, they are pretty horrific. And uh, they're, they're usually that crash that stays with that trooper his entire career, the one that he never forgets about. And after living through and then watching what troopers see every day. I can't imagine what was going through any of their minds when they hit that median and started crossing it. We've seen all the video footage from her accident and everything, and we just started bawling, like just looking at it, and we were talking about it. Charity felt compelled to say thank you. To the families who got the steel barriers up from the bottom of my heart, I thank you. To a mother whose life has changed forever and is pushing for change for everyone else. I'd like to thank all the parents of the children who died and were injured more than two years ago on I-20. We just felt obligated that we needed to reach out to her and be like, look, thank you for everything that you've done. And we could be looking at more cable barriers being installed in the future. I've learned a report studying the 3132 interloop in, around South and Southwest Shreveport is now complete. Last year, we detailed how deadly the interloop had been in a small 12-month period, including a head-on fatality that took the life of Casey Colley. A DOTD spokesperson says she's unable to tell me yet whether the report does suggest cable barriers will be installed on the interloop, but we will continue following that, especially now that that report is complete.